Let me just put it on. Yeah, let me put it on that do not. Welcome to the Lone Star Collective Podcast. I'm your host, Jesse Williams. This is episode 39. Our guest this week is MC Wellness Group. We're joined this week by MC Wellness Group, which is Eve Candioti and Paige Wengler. Hello. <laughs> Welcome in, lady. Hi. Hello. 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 Thank you for having us. We're excited to be here. Uh, how's, how's the weather down there in Houston? rainy and a little cold which is kind of nice so we have some like some tea um, some tea i almost called it chai but some tea <laughs> <laughs> and um yeah how what's mm-hmm. going on up there in dallas in fort worth i don't know about you jesse it's it's been kind of chill but we're about to get some wicked storms and then and then it's going to be hot for like the next five months i had mm-hmm. horrendous weather i think it was saturday night yeah saturday night um luckily for me um i had a tree branch i've got these things that are called ornamental pear trees they don't support their limbs very well when they get older so all it takes is a little bit of rain some wind and you can have a branch just snap and fall down so i had a branch about larger than my head uh, just saw fall off at like apparently 11 o'clock at night fell halfway into the street Ooh. and i happen to see it when i'm like checking to see how bad the rain is and it had died down i was like oh i better go drag this out of the road before a car hits this hmm. spent all day sunday with had to go buy a chainsaw and spent sunday just brum, brum, brum. it was not fun <laughs> it's exercise you, you moved it and no one got hurt <laughs> it's a blessing i got some exercise in there you go and playing with some like a tool equipment, right? Like some power tools. That, I mean, that's kind of riv- like manly, power- rivet- riveting, <laughs> riveting. <laughs> My nine-year-old son definitely enjoyed that. He was. I was like, "Hey, you, you're old enough. Let me show you how you can use this. Uh-huh. Let, let him get one go at it." So, and everybody still has their fingers. Yes. Okay. Perfect. Cool. Yeah. No, no, no holes and stitches <laughs> in my chest from somebody jabbing me with a chainsaw either. So, awesome. Mission accomplished. It's been, other than that, the weather's been, it's been all right. It's been in like the high 80s, humid. Yeah, it's, toler- it's tolerable compared to last week when it was 100 degrees out of nowhere. Right, right. Well, here we are. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so tell us about MC Wellness Group. Sure. So um, we are registered nurses who specialize in the endocannabinoid system. And, you know, and it's easier just to say like we're cannabis nurses, but the endocannabinoid system is a lot more than just cannabis. And so we focus on um, implementing cannabis, not implementing cannabis, just depending on like what the client um, desires and needs. Yeah. And just also incorporating a holistic framework within that as well. And we have a couple of topics we are really like to dive into one of those being women's health, which includes um, sensuality intimacy. And we also like to talk about or dive into like the surgical process and surgical outcomes. Overall wellness. Yeah. Yeah. And I would say when we're talking about like holistic, what does that even mean? We hear that term a lot. So what we're really focusing on, because, you know, the ECS is a balancing, you know, it balances everything out, right? Homeostasis. So the holistic approach includes like the mind, body, soul, spirit, whatever you call it, whatever's you're comfortable in terms. And then we also incorporate community and relationships because all of those factors um, influence our health and our endocannabinoid system. Wow, that's some incredible integration. Um, reaching out for the soul. Like, I love that. That's that's real medicine, isn't it? 
Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because, you know, the power to heal within, you know, and it really, it's a lot about like our mindset and what we're telling, you know, telling ourselves, we believe that. And then our mind, like talk about the biggest liar, mm-hmm. <laughs> you <Are> know, you <laughs> like, like whatever, you know, so like, like, you know, weeding through that BS and like getting in and like really listening intuitively is you know, our M- Mindset. And as somebody who has an autoimmune disorder, I can testify to that because when you're under a lot of stress, when possibly you really shouldn't be under a lot of stress, there's really nothing stressful going on. That mindset can definitely kick like your immune system in to start doing things you don't want it to do. For sure. Yes. It's like when our bodies are in that fight or flight, like our sympathetic nervous system mode, it's just there's no time for the the chill. You can't really activate that calming down from within whenever we're just like way up here breathing heavy, anxieties at a high. It's just, it's not feasible for long-term. For love, long-term. Yeah. Love the conversation with the mindset and anxiety because we were something we were working through, you know, coming to see y'all, we get a little anxious about talking about this. Mm. Um, so we switched it up because in the MRI, anxiety and excitement look the same. So then it, like, you know, mm-hmm. we started thinking like, we're excited about this. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, which we were, you know, we are, mm-hmm. um, but like, just, yeah. yeah. Chemically, our brains signal like it, like excitement and anxiety show up almost the same. So like just even that re- simple rephrasing of like, oh, hey, no, I'm excited. I'm not anxious. Like that's just it's simple to have those redirections within yes. the mind. And it's I'd say it's fair to understand that anxiety is not just a negative mm-hmm. emotion. Um, I Growing up, I never knew anxious as being such. Um, It was always like, are you anxious to go to the water park? Are you anxious to go see the movie? Like, you're excited. You're Mm -hmm. really looking forward to it. You're all just worked up and you're giddy. You're like, oh, yeah, I want to go. And then you climb the water slide and then you're like, oh, now I'm anxious. (laughs) (laughs) Anxious. Some people. Yeah. But yeah, so so that mindset, you know, in health is very important. And also like when you're when you're dealing with like cannabis, you know, cannabinoid therapeutics or cannabis, when you're using that mindset is important and having that intention of why you're using it, mm-hmm. you know, um, goes a long way in getting, you know, optimizing your results. For sure. Yeah, purpose, Especially- purpose driven medicine as opposed to like something that you know, there's no cure all, right? Every he I always say heal, healing is a journey. And um, you have to know which direction to go and how fast to go. And it's uh, it sounds like you y'all are, are really digging in deep into that. That's uh, that's super awesome. Thank you. You know, healing and we, we focus on wellness. So that's kind of like we got we were both in traditional roles, you know, history of traditional roles where they focus on disease you know, and so we really focus on wellness and what wellness looks like is super individualized, just like our endocannabinoid system. Right. Mm -hmm. And it really is a journey. Yeah, it definitely is a journey. And, um, it's, it can go in like a cycle, right. Cause our life goes in cycles. Um, you know, think about the seasons. And so being, having that compassion, actually our intent for this, for today was, you know, um, going with the flow while being compassionate with it. (laughs) We like the flow. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, I, I would have music going the entire time if we could, but we do have to focus on people's voices. I'm curious real quick. Uh, how does, as last I checked, they're still not teaching, you know, endogenous cannabinoid system in medical school. Um, how does one go get into that kind of profession and, and really take that because uh, you know you because that's almost y'all are almost like pioneering something with with cannabis and in wellness so i'm just curious about how that journey has been from y'all for y'all from the beginning so for me personally like i've been learning about the endocannabinoid system before even going to nursing school and so being in nursing school and them not talking about the endocannabinoid system and talking about cannabis as something that is like oh, like watch out for these people that are using cannabis and like just talking about it as if with such a negative connotation, it's not allowing the science to really come forward. So with the knowledge that I have already going into it, the endocannabinoid system, it was interesting to kind of like think about how these could be intertwining. Um, And then afterwards, I, you know, was just tired of the traditional disease state 
type of nursing and really just got my foot in the door and just getting certifications to make sure that I'm qualified and I'm speaking with the best knowledge and with like evidence-based practice for the clients that we see. And then my journey, um, I started using cannabis as a teenager. Um, I didn't realize at that time it was more medicinal. I, you know, we believe that it, everybody who uses cannabis um, is using it for medicinal purposes, even if that's mood elevation. So, so what I did is um, went through my journey, um, and there was roles where I could not use cannabis, and I saw, um, you know, an autoimmune disorder, you know, creep back up. I saw anxiety. Um, I also had P- I have PTSD from working trauma, trauma, um, emergency department level yeah. one. Um, and so I got out of the traditional setting and was going as a non-traditional and I started traveling to states where they were legal. And this is where I found out about the endocannabinoid system. So when that started around 2014 and then um, came out of the closet in Texas, you know, fully practicing in 2020 MC wellness group form. And then I found her. (laughs) And then, so you were asking about how we found each other through, it's called Cannabis Nurses Network. This is a wonderful supportive platform for um, nurses and all healthcare professionals to come in and get that support. um, And that's how we met each other. So really there's also Society of Cannabis Clinicians. That is a great resource for healthcare professionals and allies. Um, great thought leaders. Dr. Russo is there. Dr. Ethan Russo is in there. <laughs> Dr. Uh, Dustin Sulak is also there. So Dr. Wilson King, love her, love her, um, are all She's there doing. and accessible. So I had Russo on my mind today for some reason. Him and um, <laughs> oh. Walt Wallstein, the two of them yeah. were on my mind. I was like, I don't know why I thought of the podcast today. I was like, I got to see about finding those guys and getting them here to talk about these same things. Yeah, that would be great. Oh, They're gosh. in some podcasts. I've seen them. So, hey, put it out there. Put it out there. Jesse, have we had anybody so far? Have we even talked to anybody on the clinician side of, you know, dealing with cannabis? I think most of our our, our podcasts are with people who are, are from, I guess, uh, you know, people who are running for office or lawyers or industry professionals. I think like we I don't think we've had. Have we? We had somebody who is a clinician that's out of the, uh, I caught the the DMV, the uh, Delaware, Maryland, Virginia area, DC, mm-hmm. Maryland, Virginia area. Um, I think online she goes by Ashley MS squared, and she wrote a book called uh, Aces Medicine. I think I was, that was episode nineteen. Yeah, my point was that uh, we don't get to often talk a lot to people who are actually dealing with cannabis and using it as a medicine. Or, or really get to have that conversation. And so uh, your perspective is is very unique, and it's definitely one that uh, I know we like to amplify because um, you're right. And I love that you coined the term mood elevation because that is, that is a very chic way of, uh, you know, saying getting high. <laughs> <laughs> Just, uh, yeah, elevated. Like yes, elevated. You know, there's different levels of elevation, of course. Yeah, um, laughter is medicine, you know, yeah. similar thing. I want to so, make sure the right mood is elevated, though. True. And the right environment yes. with the right intention, right? With the right people, mm-hmm. too. So mm-hmm. they can all play a role. And, right. and so, like, why nurses? Let's talk a little bit about, like, why nurses are so important in the cannabis space. You know, may it be, when I say, when we're talking cannabis, we're talking hemp. We're talking medical, we're talking adult use, rec- or, you know, recreational use, and we're also talking illicit. So really what, our, what we do as nurses is we educate, advocate, and support. Those are all the things that we can do under our nursing license. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and um, with that, you know, we also do harm reduction as well. And educating people about this system and how mm-hmm. to really work with it. And I think one thing about why we specify, you know, why we focus a lot on women is with women, with it, both bodies, um, highest receptors are in our brain, but in women, the second highest receptors of endocannabinoids, endocannabinoid receptors are in our female reproductive system. So there's a lot going on, you know, with dosing and, and how to maximize your, your wellness results playing with the hormones. Mm-hmm. That's really something awesome. I've wondered about on the, on the male side is I've, because I have rheumatoid arthritis and a common medication that's given is NSAIDs, mm-hmm. that there's a lot of intestinal issues that take place. And I've heard it for men, there's 
a vast amount in the intestinal tract. And that that's why cannabis is a much better option because if you're taking the typical NSAID like ibuprofen, mm -hmm. it'll just, it's going to rot away your intestines. And cannabis does not have that same fallout despite it is technically a form of an NSAID and there's all these cannabinoid receptors there. So when I do a quick disclaimer, we combine traditional and alternative healthcare together. So we, we, you know, like there, there's, there's a place for, for everything. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and it's all about a balancing act. Just want to put that in there. Um, and then when you're dealing with, like when you're dealing with cannabis, because it works on so many things like pain, anxiety, mood, um, inflammation, those sort of things, you want a multi-layer approach. So it may be where you're you, using inhalation, you're um, using ingestion. raw flour right mm -hmm. through ingestion. We love the smoothie route with that. Mm -hmm. And that really, those acids really help with that inflammation. And, you know, you may be using topicals and tinctures suppositories. and gummies, suppositories. Another great way, especially for GI issues. Mm -hmm. Crohn's, yeah, Crohn's disease, um, uh, um, ulcerative colitis, those kinds of things, absolutely. Yeah, it's, it's just layering the different ways, multi-layered. It's, it's amazing how many different applications and different medical concepts you can approach using cannabis. Right, and I think this is where, like, the scientist in us, you know, we have research because we have, you know, thousands of years of it, right? You know, we've been using it and prohibition has been a little under a hundred years. And, um, but what we do look for is, is that science because of that harm reduction, right? That harm reduction is super important. So there's certain things that are going on where, where we're not on board yet, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and there's also just like things to consider. A lot of people are on medications. I mean, inside you can use with cannabis, but there are some medications that you shouldn't, they can interact with cannabis and you should maybe steer away from using cannabis if you're on certain medications or you have certain medical conditions. And so in a place that people, a lot of people don't take those things into consideration. And so coming at it from a, like a nurse's standpoint with the medical background that we have to make sure that people are using it safely and for the best, to get the best results and with the, with whatever their intentions that they have in mind. Yeah, we do a medication review, including supplements and all of that in our one-on-one -on -one consultations. Ooh, great time. Yep. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I had to look down and was like, oh, man, we're at like 18 minutes. My, my golly. That's Woo. when you know that it's fun. And at Woo. least I know, at least I know the, the bed's hearable by the opposite party. So test confirmed. <laughs> <laughs> Makes me happy inside as a producer. So it is time that we go into a sponsor break here at the Lone Star Collective Podcast. I'm your host, Chessie Williams. I'm joined by co-host Austin Zam Harari. This week is episode 39. MC Wellness Group is our guest. We will be right back after these messages. Thrive Apothecary offers an experience truly unique from anything else in Texas. A full-service cannabis solution that is doctor-owned and offers customers every level of cannabis legally available in Texas. From traditional CBD products to emerging hemp-derived THC edibles, smokables, and now medical cannabis. As a licensed medical cannabis provider, prospective patients from anywhere in Texas can book a sponsored online eligibility consultation to determine if they qualify for a medical marijuana prescription from the comfort of their own home. Plus, for Texas veterans, the first prescription appointment is donated by Thrive. Visit thrivetx.com for more information. Oak Cliff Cultivators is a sponsor of Texas Cannabis Collective and the Lone Star Collective podcast. Oak Cliff focuses on quality assurance with their hemp products while providing customer service to help you discover cannabinoids to meet your needs. Their product line includes hemp flour, pre-rolls, CBG tinctures, edibles, Delta Eat, and Merge. For more information on their product's quality or to shop online today, visit oakcliffcultivators.com or contact them at info at oakcliffcultivators.com. Welcome back to the Lone Star Collective Podcast, distributed on Spotify, iTunes, Google Podcasts, 
Facebook, and much more, to give Texans information regarding policy, industry, and culture. Here is this week's host, Jesse Williams and Austin Sam Hariri. Welcome back to the Lone Star Collective Podcast. I'm your host, Jesse Williams. This is episode 38. Actually, not 38. It's episode 39. I'm about to say the wrong episode number here. Our guest this week is the MC Wellness Group. It is Eve Candioti and Paige Wingler. I, I, my memory is just, oh, today. I'm just, I'm not gonna lie, I'm really into that song. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I like this jam, man. Ooh, yes, Depeche Mode. <laughs> Feeling it. Feeling the music. And Austin has re- remuted himself. <laughs> I know. I'm I'm so bad at this technology thing, and it's not even technology. It's just literally simply my own incompetence. So uh, I just like to blame technology. Um, do, y- do y'all do y'all incorporate music into your? Um, in, into the kind of the wellness thing with cannabis i'm just curious that that do. sounds kind of your alley. yes we tell do. me more about dance. that yeah i mean we do we dance and music i mean that's just part of it it's just select uh you know like what the clients prefer i think like we do like we also incorporate like frequency music as well mm-hmm. um we like to we like to get into like the routine and kind of see what works for them different ways they can boost their endocannabinoid system beyond just cannabis because it really takes that like multi layer approach as said so if the if the client likes to dance or they like music then hey schedule that in your calendar make sure you're having like 10 minutes of dancing in the middle of the day let those emotions come up and like feel into the feel into the day and you there's a lot you can do with music and just yeah especially when you combine cannabis (laughs) and you know music is something that we use in the office like it's going all the time and then Mm so uh, the offices will have like these TVs, so we'll have YouTube music. So sometimes we have to change the videos. <laughs> it's like, it's super inappropriate. People are people like walk by. They're just like, what are they doing? What are they there? watching? Why is Cardi B's WAP on the TV in the doctor's office? <laughs> we're nurse, We're nurses. Okay. Yeah. Pleasure. Yeah. We're talking about fun. pleasure. <laughs> Speaking of such, we were we were opening the show talking about right beforehand about um sexual health in cannabis. I figured what a better interlude than having <laughs> Cardi B's WAP to talk about sexuality in cannabis. So I think like when you're talking about cannabis and like that intimacy, once again it's setting that intention, creating creating that space and a safe container. Um, you know, and first I would say start start solo, (laughs) do a session, you know, with cannabis, you know, do a session without cannabis compare and then bring a partner or partners into, into the equation. But that's like when you're ingesting or, you know, when your lube is something different where you could, you know, start implementing that now with your, Mm -hmm. with your partner or partners. But yeah, just really like feeling into your body, part of the intimacy, like we're oftentimes we're not in our, in our bodies, we're tapped out. So just really getting in, getting inward and like allowing yourself to be open to receiving pleasure and like get whatever to-do list out of your head and just allowing yourself to be in the present moment and receive pleasure and knowing how to pick the right products to do so. Like if you you know, a lot of people have kids and a busy lifestyle. So it's like, okay, what product is going to be best for you before you engage in some intimacy? It's not going to be maybe an edible that's going to take four minutes to an hour to kick in if you only have a certain amount of time. So a lot of that's just planning and making sure that you're using the right products for what it is that you're trying to do in the time that you have. And I would say along the lines of the right products, you know, 
any oil based is not going to be latex friendly. So that includes your clothing. <laughs> that includes like, you know, toys and condoms. <laughs> You're asking for it, Jesse. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. You're up the I'm, I'm, I'm loving this because I'm like, this is stuff that I know. I, I, I've, I have educated myself on, and it doesn't have to deal with just oil and for cannabis oil, but you'd think that we'd have a decent enough education system in any state that people would know, like oil and latex don't go well together if you're trying to use it as a prophylactic. It just doesn't. Right. <laughs> yeah, you, and people get very creative. And I would just say um, this too, since we're on the subject, um, let's keep sugar out of the vulva and vagina area. <laughs> so like look for your products and make sure that there's there's not sugar. Let's not use honey, you know, chocolate syrup. That jelly that goes on your toast is not the right jelly, people, okay? <laughs> you don't want to get a bacterial infection yeah. or throw off your pH. It's just especially with the summer coming. Yeah. You know, yeah. It's uncomfortable. Not those kind of edibles. <laughs> right. Yeah. No. Right. I mean, edible, I mean, just don't put them that, don't put them up that route. Yeah. <laughs> Around up. Yeah. Yeah. You know, when they say there's bread in the oven, it needs to be a baby, not baking a cake with yeast. <laughs> exactly. Well, it happens, but you know, yeah. and when it does, you might, you know, you, you have, figure it out when it happens but right. the, the goal is to harm reduction and hopefully not have those outcomes and i think like you know when you're talking just about sex in general and then adding cannabis in it you know with a partner um establishing clear communication and intention and also boundaries is important because you know you it's all about the dosing you know because like you may go into it and then it may hit you a little different than mm -hmm. what you were expecting it to and you may not be in the mood but and having that agreement with your partner beforehand mm -hmm. um, is important when you're implementing cannabis because there's the there's also the fact that too much cannabis is has the opposite effects so you know it can help with libido but it can also you know inhibit, yeah <laughs> can also inhibit that so just making sure like we said using the right dose and being uh, I like that you mentioned communication because really that's what, you know, intimacy, that's like the deepest of communication, right? Mm -hmm. Between partners. So uh, I do appreciate that. Like uh, you're looking, you know, be, be honest, be upfront, you know, talk about these things, even, you know, kind of in the heat of the moment and, 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 and keep that communication alive because um, you know, that's, that's, that's part of the journey and the, and the process is is kind of that like pure essence of love right so. right and fun i mean because like right. you, know, right. or, you know like porn is like sci-fi that's what um ashley montes you know he will say you know that's sci-fi <laughs> so it's like you know when something slips up or like something happens it's okay to laugh about it and like move on you know or just or get whatever whatever you both decide at that moment or mm -hmm. all of you decide yeah. or hey. i'd say it's, it's a fair a fair statement that what some of what you're getting at before is that before you start experimenting in bed, experiment with what you're dosing with first and not just the dose, but also what strains you're using as well and how it affects you. And this is really where tracking when you're using cannabis um, is super important. So um, we, you know, you can track an old school pen and paper journal. You can use apps. Um, we like the UT app, you know, for tracking. There's a couple of other ones out there that are free. So, you know, you're right putting in like putting in all of that information and tracking it mm -hmm. and doing it alone first. Um, that way you're more comfortable. That's kind of like what, what we go for, like with women, you know, is going in, going in, doing it first by yourself <laughs> and then bringing everybody else in or other person in. Yeah. <laughs> you know what works for you first, right? Right, right. Exactly. And be okay with like speaking up about it. Like, you know, you have to be able to know how it affects your body to feel comfortable whenever you're, especially with women, we're, we're told to kind of like be more quiet and just accepting, but no, this is break time again. <laughs> yes, it is break time again. We're having so much fun. <laughs> we're, we are too. Yeah. Okay, let's do yeah, this no break doubt. and then like come right back. How about that? <laughs> I was, we, were, we were just getting into kind of like the meat of things. No pun intended. The heat of the yeah, no pun intended. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All righty. Well, it is time to do our sponsor break. 
here at the Lone Star Collective. I'm your host, Jesse Williams. This is episode 39. Our guest this week is MC Wellness Group. I'm joined by co-host Austin Zam Harari. We will be right back after this sponsor message. Thrive Apothecary offers an experience truly unique from anything else in Texas. A full-service cannabis solution that is doctor-owned and offers customers every level of cannabis legally available in Texas. From traditional CBD products to emerging hemp-derived THC edibles, smokables, and now medical cannabis. As a licensed medical cannabis provider, prospective patients from anywhere in Texas can book a sponsored online eligibility consultation to determine if they qualify for a medical marijuana prescription from the comfort of their own home. Plus, for Texas veterans, the first prescription appointment is donated by Thrive. Visit thrivetx.com for more information. Oak Cliff Cultivators is a sponsor of Texas Cannabis Collective and the Lone Star Collective podcast. Oak Cliff focuses on quality assurance with their hemp products while providing customer service to help you discover cannabinoids to meet your needs. Their product line includes hemp flour, pre-rolls, CBG tinctures, edibles, Delta 8, and merch. For more information on their product's quality or to shop online today, visit oakcliffcultivators.com or contact them at info at oakcliffcultivators.com. Welcome back to the Lone Star Collective Podcast, distributed on Spotify, iTunes, Google Podcasts, Facebook, and much more, to give Texans information regarding policy, industry, and culture. Here is this week's host, Jesse Williams and Austin Sam Hariri. Welcome back to the Lone Star Collective Podcast. I'm your host, Jesse Williams. I'm joined by co-host Austin Zamharari. Our guest this week is MC Wellness Group. It is episode 39. It has been quite the show so far, everybody. And I mean, it is, as I would like to say, it's been almost like a Mike Myers movie with all the sexual innuendos just flying all over the place. I wouldn't have it any other way. I don't know if any of y'all have watched this new Mike Myers uh, like miniseries that's on Netflix. Um, the uh, Pentavarati, I think it's called. But there is a bunch of jokes like this. Like The guy owns a, a hotel halfway between Toronto and Niagara Falls. And they call it, the guy's name is Dick. And apparently he's got elephantism. So they call it Big Dick's Halfway In. <laughs> oh, that's uh, great. Let me check that out. Yeah, <laughs> add it to the list. There's probably one of the most brilliant editing things I've ever seen for a series or movie. And they have a scene where there's just this giant load of cursing. There's just the F word over and over and over. And they're like, wait a second, how can Netflix just let this good get let Mike Myers get away with this? And all of a sudden it shows like some Netflix executive. He's like, oh, it's not the typical Mike Myers family foray we're used to. So here's that same scene again with all the cursing edited out. And it is the most sexually charged thing without the cursing. It's, <laughs> as Pat Oswalt calls it, it's G-rated filth. And G-rated filth is worse than regular filth. <laughs> Which <laughs> one's worse? Yeah. Again, check that out. <laughs> so where did we leave off? Austin, this probably had to be on your mind. You were, you were talking about the meat of it. 
Mm-hmm. Oh, no, I, I, you know, I'm curious, like, do you have, like, a lot of, cl- like, clients that, like, this is something that really piques their interest is, is cannabis and sexuality? Oh, yes, especially, especially amongst women, um, you know, yes, because, like, yes, and, and, and men, like, a lot of, like, we... Okay, some of the like best feedback we've gotten from like our classes is that you know um, I just had the best sex of my life. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah. yes, that's what we love to hear. You know, we did. A- <laughs> Good. <laughs> like you oh, utilizing some that- of the tools that we gave them. Yeah, it's it's like that's but- rewarding, you know, because we just believe that um, the way to better the community is, is through women and empowering women. So once women know about their bodies and what they're capable of, just straight up their anatomy. I mean, like, don't get me started. So (laughs) about how far behind, you know, the female anatomy discovery is, you know, compared to the male counterpart. And so just empowering them about that and letting them know it's letting women know it's okay. And being to be open to pleasure and receiving pleasure is critical. So mm-hmm. once again, it's, it's that mindset and what, what we're telling you, telling ourselves. Mm-hmm. But yeah, we get a lot of great like feedback. Giving women permission to engage in pleasure and really explore their bodies and that it's not something that should be frowned upon or that it looks weird or anything that everyone's body parts are beautiful and should be embraced. Right. I've seen a lot of vulvas working in the ED yeah. <laughs> throughout my nursing career and they're yes. all unique and they're all beautiful and it's just important that women women know that and then once that happens then you know it trickles down yeah. <laughs> it trickles down for the men too or other women yeah it's so it's like so emotionally that's this is where the spirituality and the emotional connection kind of comes in you're right because like you know intimacy is, is it, it can be a confidence builder it can be a it can be something that is really um the missing ingredient, you know, in life. So, man, you guys, y'all are awesome. This is the be- this is one of the best podcasts ever. <laughs> so, will we be back for podcast sixty nine then? Yeah. Oh my god! Let's Why let's not? schedule it. <laughs> let's get it done. Scheduled already. <laughs> you just let us know. I- I'll call it the minivan episode. Is three in the back, two in the front. <laughs> I hope everybody I hope everybody gets that reference. If you don't, I don't know how to help you anymore. Google it. So yeah. Um, Maybe not. Yeah, no, that's it. <laughs> Just don't Google image that. Right. <laughs> Uh, I was curious earlier. I think you know you had mentioned um, about something about surgery in cannabis. Do you care to elaborate on that? For sure. Yeah. So um, I actually just did a a presentation on it for the Cannabis Nurses Network, talking about how there are considerations we need to take in mind in the surgical process. There are ways that we can prep our endocannabinoid system for surgery beforehand. And then there's a time when we need to stop using cannabis before surgery. And that's at least 72 hours, but up to eight weeks. Um, And then also like afterwards, when to reintroduce surgery. I mean, cannabis (laughs) cannabis <laughs> when to reintroduce reintroduce cannabis reintroduce surgery <laughs> yeah well, some people do <laughs> yeah there's that um like when to reintroduce cannabis and like how you can incorporate your endocannabinoid system even when you're not utilizing cannabis after surgery to make sure that you're getting the best outcomes for yourself because surgery can be surgery is a doozy you know and just making sure that our clients are prepared so we also specialize in that and getting people prepared before surgery um, you know, during the surgical process and afterwards. And I do want to hit like, you know, we're talking like surgery. This could be oral surgery, right? Because, you know, um, we have a friend who's an oral surgeon, you know, in a legal state, you know, and it's something like, I'm like, you need to ask this question, you know, because if you're, you know, it could have drug, you know, medication interactions. So for sure it can interact with that's, anesthesia. That's something that's the big, that I was always heard about is that cannabis can in, interact with anesthesia. Uh, in fact, with the last time I had, when I had my endoscopy back in 2020, uh, when they were asking all of the questions and the nurse was asking all of the questions and when, you know, any, any illicit drug use. And I was like, oh, well, you know, I use cannabis. And she's like, well, when was the last time you smoked weed? And I was like, two days ago. And she's like, okay, as long as you didn't do it before you came here. <laughs> it's like, 
wow, okay. And I've heard, I've personally heard like different from anesthesiologists, like one of the ones here in Austin, I got ready to, to have something done. And they told me, I was, I was like, they're like, well, do you use anything? And I mentioned cannabis. I was like, I'm, I use hemp extracts. I mean, a lot of THC in those now. And they went, I'm not concerned about that. I was like, really? You're not concerned about the cannabis usage? And the guy's like, no, I'm more concerned about like you using methamphetamines or cocaine or some sort of a, a, a barbiturate or opiate for, for those types of things. He's like, that's what I'm concerned about. And I was like, okay. But I've heard different anesthesiologists say different things outside of that. So it's we don't even have a general consensus yet mm -hmm. in the community on these things. Yeah, I think like, and part of this is like, you know, pulling from the literature, you know, mm -hmm. I, I love doing literature reviews, love that data. And so mm -hmm. like going off of that, you know, it, pulling all of that and then presenting it to the surgical team, you know, of why this is important and what, what things to consider. Because um, a person who's using cannabis or plans to use cannabis is going to have a different approach you know, and that could be for pain management, that could be for sedation, nausea, nausea is a big one, right? So what does that look like, you know? Um, and then like, if you're saying that you're using cannabis, you know, there might be some stigma behind health with healthcare professionals, even though we're supposed to be non-judgmental um, about, you know, oh, they're drug seeking, <laughs> you know, and it's like, oh, no, it's because of how our endocannabis, our ECS is interacting, right? Mm -hmm. With all of these medications on board. So uh, yeah, education is super critical. And part of it, too, is the lack of knowledge with, like, because the endocannabinoid system isn't taught in medical school and in, like, nursing school, a lot of doctors don't even know about it and, like, aren't even considering those different um, safety considerations when it comes to cannabis. Seeing that, I want to give a shout out to Piper Lindine, who is recently graduated. She's getting her master's in medical cannabis. Ooh. Oh, you know, to Maryland? Yeah, yes. yeah, out of Maryland. So congrats to her. That's a nice. one, of the, one of the first people to get through this program that I know of. So congratulations. Bravo. Go bravo, bravo. Yeah. And also something that also we like to highlight is that we understand, uh, me and Jesse and I, we've been doing reform work here in the state for quite a long time. And we've been able to recognize for quite a long time that there are just so many talented and brilliant women that are standing on the front lines of of the cannabis issue, whether it's from a reform side, whether it's from a law and ethics side. Um, we, last week we talked to Martha Velez, who I know y'all are, are very well acquainted with, mm -hmm. and, 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 and just from the industrial side. And now, you know, we, we see it now here on the medical side. We're just so happy to see so many strong women. As a, as a man who has three daughters, it's so great to see so many women who are not only – great at uh, what they do and and how they uh communi communicate with the community about cannabis but they're just they're pioneers and they're leaders and i'm very happy to, to see you know women like you standing on that front line doing this work so thank you for being here thank, thank you, you. <laughs> it means a lot yeah. oh thank you that just yeah. more, that touched my heart <laughs> i've wondered like Austin, somebody, there's a lot of women that are, I'd say I see more women willing to advocate medically than I would say I see men willing to advocate. And I started just wondering in my mind, I was like, I wonder if like the women in Texas here are just like, fuck it, what have I got left to lose? I'm just, just go do this. They're already trying to pull crazy crap on me anyways with how I practice. I might as well just throw this into the gauntlet with it. Could be a factor. <laughs> I think there's just multiple reasons. Mm -hmm. I think I think we're just coming into like, if you just look at the women's movement, just like the history of it, like, you know, and where we are, I mean, like in the seventies, you know, women couldn't have a credit card. So, you know, finding, you know, you know, being an ally with something else that's stigmatized, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, that just, you know, pulling those two powers together and advocating. Mm -hmm. And this is like, I would say in um, my nursing career, this is one medication that I honestly can advocate for a hundred percent. Yeah. Efficacy. You heard it here first. <laughs> the um the concept that it's it's you're you're saying it's like it's familiar territory i guess is is a, a nice quick phrase for it you as women it's familiar territory that there's like you said stigma being stigmatized you're like i'm familiar with this i i know how to take the reins on this and move forward 
And as a guy, I've got to be like, <laughs> for those who are listening, they're probably like, what is the hell is that silence about? And it's like, I'm just kind of like putting my arms out like in a shrug. <laughs> but this is where like, you know, like we're working together, you know, you know, whatever gender you're identifying with, just working together on, on cannabis, you know, and everybody should have a space here. I, I, I tell people, I'm like, I, a lot of that, I'm like, personally, I'm like, I don't give a shit. I'm like, you're, you're a person, I'll treat you like a person. When I was in the Navy, they were, the don't ask, don't tell was still in place, and they were getting ready to get rid of that. And I remember telling somebody, I was like, I, all I give a damn about is do you show up to work and do your job? That, that, are you going to help us get the job done? Because I want to get the job done and go home. You want to go home to whoever? I don't care. That's not my business, and we just need to work together and get this done. That's That's the goal here. And it's, it's insane that some people can't just see past that, that they make it into something it isn't. And I'm glad that y'all are, man, expressive, I guess is, is the easiest way to say it with the, like the sexuality thing earlier. That is something that a lot of people have a difficult time talking about in general, even amongst their own partners. But yet we're having this open, free conversation here and it's great. It's, it helps, say, liberate other people, and they can have more comfortable lives. They can have wellness, and then it's as we talked about with the cancer patients. We had another guest on. It's quality of life. Mm -hmm. We overall have a better quality of life, and I thank you for that. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. I mean, sex and cannabis. This has been um, something. My parents have been trying to stamp out of me for quite a while. <laughs> so I just love the fact that I'm like, I'm a cannabis nurse specializing in sex. <laughs> and they're like, huh? Yeah, I have might support as well. now. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Might as well hit them with multiple stigmas all in one. Right. Yeah. So was, we're wrapping up here this last segment at the end of the episode. Plug your website, how people can find you, and any other things you really wanted to bring up, some topic you may have wanted to discuss that we didn't get on top of. Sure. I would say first, you can find us on Instagram at MC Wellness Group. That is the best way to find out what's going on. We're going to be doing a June 3rd event. Um, we're fourth. <laughs> um, and we're also doing an IG Live series right now. And it's for three months and just talking about different. Right now, we're just going over the basics of women's wondrous endocannabinoid system. Next month, we're going to be tying in hormones. And then the next month after that is summer loving. So talking nice. about some intimacy there and we'll be having a live event at the end of each month, kind of going more in depth, virtual. Um, a virtual event, going more in depth about the topics we talk about in our IG lives every Wednesday. And we also on our Instagram, you'll see we have a, um, a well, a cannabis wellness course. And mm -hmm. what that does is we, we sit you down, <laughs> you know, it's online self paced <laughs> and um, lay out your intention and your goal. And then by the end of it, you have a plan of which cannabinoids to use and products and a backup plan. So when you're going to a dispensary or a CBD store um, and they, you know, products are limited, um, you know, you have that backup plan. And if you're talking to somebody and, and they don't have the exact product, you know, they kind of have like what you're looking for and that way you're set up. And also how to make your own medicine. Cause we know that, Buying products can get expensive. So at the end of it, we show how to make your own products with our favorite smell proof method. You know, right. don't want to alert the neighbors. Oh, and we actually use um, Oak Cliff trim. Yeah, we yeah. do. Right. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, our, our website's MC Wellness Group, but you know, our Instagram, it's a little under construction. So our Instagram is the best way to really get in contact with us. You can book a consultation for overall wellness, for surgical wellness. And within that wellness, we also can dive into intimacy if that's something that you're interested in. And we do speaking engagements. We yeah. both present at the Cannabis Nurses mm -hmm. Network and we're you know, signing up for some other major speaking events as well on these topics. <laughs> awesome. Um, Instagram, uh, and I had a little ticker going across the bottom for those who are, who are listening and seeing, you can go see the video. I hope you see the video. The video is very entertaining. It's just as entertaining <laughs> as the audio. <laughs> Twice as much fun. I always say that. I, I always. I need to start saying that because it is. <laughs> I always take an extra view. I'm not gonna lie about that. So, I appreciate that y'all have joined us this week. Our guest this week is MC Wellness Group, episode thirty nine. I am your host Jesse Williams. I was joined this week by co-host Austin Zam Hariri. We've had a wonderful episode, and it's been. It's been something. Wow, man, all these jokes, all these sexual jokes. I don't. 
it's it's been quite entertaining. I thank everybody for their time. I hope everybody has a great week, and we will see y'all next week for the next episode, episode forty. Y'all Ooh. have a great week. Bye. 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 Adios. Good job.